welcome to today's lecture today we will be studying about the planes regions and quadrants of the abdomen for the convenience for the description of the viscera and organ the abdomen is been divided into nine regions it is divided into four imaginary planes on the anterior abdominal wall they are two horizontal planes and two vertical planes the horizontal planes are superior horizontal plane inferior horizontal plane the vertical planes are right and left vertical planes so coming to the superior horizontal plane so it is also called as transpyloric plane of addison a d d i s o n so it is placed midway between the suprasternal notch and the pubic symphysis so here this is a sternum so this is the notch that is the jugular notch that is called suprasternal notch and here the both the hip bones you can see here where it's uniting that is the pubic symphysis so this line that is the transpyloric plane is lying between the suprasternal notch and the pubic symphysis or approximately it is lying midway between the umbilicus so you are, you are having the umbilicus and the xiphysternal joint that is the body of the sternum and the xiphoid process so here there is a joint so approximately it is lying between the xiphoid process and the umbilicus so it lies at the lower border of l1 vertebra so it crosses at the tip of the 9th costal cartilage so in this diagram you can see this is the transpyloric plane which we saw now now coming to the transtubercular plane so what you seeing here so this is this is the inferior horizontal plane that is called the transtubercular plane so it is drawn at a level of tubercle of the iliac crest so here this is the hip bone so this is the iliac crest so here you are having anterior superior iliac spine so here you will have the tubercle of iliac crest which will be located around 5 cm posterior to the anterior superior iliac spine so the intertubercular plane or the it is also called transtubercular plane so it lies at the level of l5 vertebra so in this diagram what you can see already you saw first a horizontal line that is called the transpyloric plane then you saw transtubercular plane which is passing between the both the tubercles of the ilium then now what you are going to see is two vertical planes so these two are the vertical planes which passes downwards from the midpoint of the clavicle to the mid inguinal point so you can see this clavicle so this is the sternal end this is the acromial end so it is passing in in the midpoint of the clavicle to the mid inguinal point so midpoint of this clavicle is present between the suprasternal notch and the acromioclavicular joint then the mid inguinal point is present midway between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic symphysis now you can see the four imaginary lines that is two vertical lines and two horizontal lines which is dividing the abdomen into nine regions so these regions which is formed is arranged into three horizontal zones of the abdomen this is the upper horizontal zone middle horizontal zone and this is the lower horizontal zone so from right to left that is in the upper abdomen so this is upper abdomen from right to left you are having the right hypochondrium then epigastrium this is epigastric region is called epigastrium then the left hypochondrium then coming to the middle abdomen what you can see here so this is uh, having right lumbar then the umbilical region then the left lumbar region 
then coming to the lower abdomen from right to left you are having the right iliac fossa that is the right iliac region then the hypogastrium then the left iliac region now coming to the transpyloric plane which passes through the lower border of L1 vertebra so it is a key plane of the abdomen because it passes through many structures so in this diagram you are having only few structures what is seen that is so these are the kidney this is the duodenum then this is the pancreas so it passes through one is the pylorus of the stomach then the neck of pancreas then hilum of the kidney so this portion is the hilum of the kidney so it passes through the inferior part of the left hilum as well as the superior aspect of the right hilum so this is because the left kidney is higher uh, is at a higher level than the right kidney then this transpyloric plane also passes through the origin of superior mesenteric artery then the formation of portal vein root of transverse mesocolon then inferior margin of liver and also the neck of gall bladder so apart from the four imaginary plane that is two horizontal and two vertical which divides the abdomen into nine region apart from that we are also supposed to know few other planes so one is the subcostal plane what you are seeing here so this subcostal plane so it is also an imaginary horizontal plane which passes immediately below the costal margin so here you are having this ribs costal margin so it is just passing just below the costal margin so it passes anteriorly to the lowest border of costal cartilages of the 10th rib and posteriorly to the body of the l3 vertebra so this is the l3 vertebra so posteriorly at the body of the l3 vertebra another plane what you see is the trans umbilical plane so this plane it is a transverse plane which passes through the umbilicus so it lies at the level of at the level of intervertebral disc in between the l3 and l4 vertebra another thing what you are supposed to know is the linea alba so it is the depression which is seen in the median plane so this linea alba extends from the xiphoid process above up to the pubic symphysis below it is the tendinous raphe which separates the rectus muscle from each other so this linea alba divides the anterior abdominal wall into right and left halves another thing what you are supposed to know is linea semilunaris it is the curved furrow which extends from the tip of the ninth costal cartilage up to the pubic tubercle so in this picture what you can see so here this is the linea alba so this which is present in the midline which is attached about to the xiphoid process and below to the pubic symphysis so this is dividing the anterior abdominal wall into two equal halves that is right as well as the left half then what is seeing here so this is the linea semilunaris so this was this was the curved furrow which is extending from the tip of the ninth costal cartilage up to the pubic tubercle so it corresponds to the lateral margin of rectus abdominis muscle so here will, this will be the on both sides you are will be having the rectus abdominis muscle lateral to it this is the linea semilunaris now in this picture you can see all the nine regions the planes were so this was the trans pyloric plane here trans tubercular plane and two vertical mid, -clav mid clavicular planes so and the regions were this is the right hypochondrium epigastrium left hypochondrium right lumbar umbilical left lumbar right iliac fossa hypogastrium and left 
iliac region so now coming to the contents of these regions so if you see the right hypochondrium the main content is the liver and gall bladder then the epigastrium the main content is the stomach pancreas and duodenum the left hypochondrium it is spleen then the left colic flexure then coming to the right lumbar region it is the right kidney right ureter and ascending colon the umbilical region here you are having the loops of small intestine aorta then inferior vena cava then coming to the left lumbar region you are having left kidney left ureter and the descending colon then coming to the right iliac fossa here you are having the cecum and the appendix then the hypogastrium we are having coils of small intestine urinary bladder then uterus if there is enlargement of the uterus then you can in uh, see in this region then here in the left iliac fossa you are having the sigmoid colon so the knowledge about the nine regions will help us to know the exact source of pain so if there is pain in the right hypochondriac region it is due to gall bladder or biliary apparatus if the pain is in the epigastric region it is due to stomach and duodenum if it is due, uh, present in the left hypochondrium it is either due to the pancreas so the pain arising from right lumbar region is due to the right kidney in the umbilical region from the small intestine left lumbar region it is the left kidney then pain in the right iliac fossa so mainly it is the vermiform appendix so pain in the hypogastric region from the urinary bladder and pain arising from the left iliac fossa it may be either due to sigmoid colon so it gives us an idea from exact source where the pain is arising also you have to know that apart from dividing the abdomen into these nine regions we can also divide it into four quadrants this can be done by taking two planes so one is the trans umbilical plane which is an imaginary line passing through the umbilicus it passes in between the intervertebral disc of l3 and l4 vertebra and another vertical line which is passing medially it is called the medial vertical line so this divides the abdomen into four quadrants they are named as right upper quadrant left upper quadrant right lower quadrant and left lower quadrant so in this picture you can see how the abdomen is divided into four quadrants so here you are having the trans umbilical plane so this is passing through the umbilicus so it is present in between the l3 and l4 vertebra then another is the vertical plane that is called the median vertical plane so these two planes so that is also passing through the umbilicus so it is dividing the umbilicus into four quadrants so this is the right upper quadrant left upper quadrant right lower quadrant and left lower quadrant it is important to know that pain in the abdomen occurs mainly for two reasons so one is either if there is an inflammation secondly if there is an obstruction thank you for watching